Right, it's been a very special week for Leighton Orient as they celebrated promotion back to League One after an eight-year absence. And the night was certainly eventful, to say the least. I was there, so I experienced it all. And I'm delighted to say we are joined live by the club's manager now, Richie Wellens. Richie, good to see you once again. I remember we were talking as the celebrations and the champagne was going all over the pitch. Have they been going on since Tuesday? Have you managed to rein them in a little? No, no, I think the players on, on Wednesday went for a meal and a couple of drinks, um, so we give them Wednesday, Thursday off. Um, but we're back in today, myself, I've just been watching crew with the staff, making sure that we're ready and we're prepared for, for Saturday. You know, we've, been, we've had a fantastic season, but we, we want to try and win the league now. We don't want to lose any more games from, from now to the end of the season. Uh, Richie, it's four years since the late Justin Edinburgh got the club out of the National League and back into the Football League. Your chairman, Nigel Travis, says that you've continued the good work started by Edinburgh. So how much does this promotion mean to the club and its supporters? No, I think when any, when any club had such a figure like Justin and, and obviously it was just tragic what happened... Um, it, it takes time to, to, to recover from that, and the, the club have took time. It's, it's taken a long time to recover from it. Um, Justin son Charlie has, has kept his legacy with, with his defibrillator and the stuff that he's doing um, away from the pitch, which is fantastic, and Justin, we're very, very proud of that. But, um, no, it's not, me, it's not a case of me carrying on his work. He put the club in a, a stronger position than what it was, you know, and I found a club that was in, in good condition, um, had a chance to improve. And we've just managed to take it forward and, and have a brilliant season. So, um, no, listen, it's always going to take time to recover from that. And slowly but surely, we, we've, got to a, we've got to a level now that we believe this club should be at. Richie, let's return to the game at Gillingham that secured promotion earlier this week. It was, it was a bizarre night, wasn't it, with the power cut plunging the ground into darkness, the fans turning their torches on their phones <clears> to <throat> light up the stands. I mean, what was going through your, your mind at that point? Well, obviously, it's a bit of a surreal experience when, when all of a sudden he just goes pitch black. Um, and then we have that 15 minutes off the pitch where we're obviously aware of other scores. He was 10 minutes added on at the Swindon game. And then just as we're about to restart the game, obviously we find out that Swindon had beaten Bradford and, and we've been promoted. So you allow the, the players a couple of minutes to celebrate, but then we have to get on with the game. The difficulty with that is we didn't have, we didn't have a warm-up. We'd been off, you know, when you play 80 minutes and the, the, the players are at peak in terms of their intensity, in terms of blood flowing around the body, they're, they're at maximum. It was really difficult for them to come off for 15, 20 minutes and then restart the game. So, um, Gillingham had done enough to win the game. Congratulations to Neil Harris because the second half of the season done a fantastic job. And then the game petered out really badly. They kept the ball. We weren't happy to press. We were down to 10 men. We didn't want to take a hit on our goal difference. So, the game petered out, which is a, a bit of a surreal experience. But, um, you know, we just wanted the game to finish and obviously start the celebrations. Yeah, it was a surreal end, wasn't it? Uh, I mean, we saw one of your players tying his shoelaces as the game restarted. It, it was a really sort of odd atmosphere, not something you normally see on a football pitch. Yeah, the, the strangest thing was, is when Gillingham were keeping it round the back, the supporters actually demanding that he go forward to try and score another one. But um, <laughs> they knew that if we scored one, then they might not be safe because obviously the goal difference would come into it. But... Um, yeah, I mean, Aaron Drinan's down tiny his lace. That was a bit of a, you know, probably the quickest Aaron's move over the last three or four weeks. <laughs> Rich, what will your goals be next season? Obviously, you've got a big game against Crewe where you can seal the title, but is challenging for promotion to the Championship a realistic aim? <clears throat> no, I think we, we need to make sure that in the next two or three weeks we come up with a plan. The, Nigel and Kent, the owners here, and Martin Link had a plan for six years to get it from the National League to League One. This is a six year, so they've completed that journey. What I'm aware, what I'm wary of now is that the people don't relax and, and just sit off a little bit. Um, I'm young, I'm ambitious. You know, I've been through a lot of experiences in, in my short time as a manager, so I want to kick on. So we need to come up with a new, a new plan, whether it be three years, whether it be another six year plan. We need to make sure that we're all clear, we're all aligned and on the same, the same thought process. So um, I do think it's a, it's a more difficult league. League One is split. You know, you have the, 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 the smaller clubs that have come, come up through, like Fleetwood, Cambridge, Accrington, mainly through a non-league background. And then you have the huge clubs, the likes of Ipswich, Derby, Sheffield, Wednesday, that have, are coming from a Premier League background. So it's a really tough division. 
Um, I do believe our, our budget next year will be competitive, but it's important that we, myself, Martin and the board, sit down in the next two or three weeks, make sure that we're all on the same thought process and, and plan so you don't get a, a like of a Daryl Clark situation where he gets a, a, a club promoted and then his remit is to stay up and then within one year of a five-year contract he's sacked, which is, which is not acceptable. All right, well, thanks very much uh, for talking to us, Richie, and uh, congratulations. It's a fantastic achievement. Good luck in your, in your next game and the rest of the uh, season, of course. Cheers, guys. I appreciate that. Thank you.